Hey, I just wanted to get on here and um, give you a quick encouraging word from the Lord. Um, it is Sunday and it has been a blessed Sunday um, over these last couple weeks. Um, God has really been just doing some awesome, amazing things um, in corporate worship and along with my own personal walk um, and, and spending time with him. And so um, I just wanted to get on here because I felt like um, a lot of believers uh, struggle with this and deal with this and it is our our job to um, to be there for one another you know uh, the enemy likes to make us feel alone like we're the only ones going through stuff and so getting on here is just to reach out to whoever because I really feel it heavy in my heart that a lot of Christians a lot of believers are going through some stuff and so somebody posted earlier one of the um, the blogs that I follow uh, posted a, a, a photo and I'm gonna post it at, on here afterwards on my story and just save it and be encouraged because um, it says you can know that God works everything for our good, um, but still acknowledge how painful some of those things are. I feel like this is where the enemy trips us up. Um, he makes us feel like if we are going through something that we should feel shameful or we should feel guilty or um, we have this perception of, um, you know, if I don't have everything together or if my life isn't perfect, you know, then it's not good enough or, you know, we... we we also deal a lot with that comparison. We compare our lives with other people and we feel like if we haven't met where they're at and we're here or, you know, maybe we're here and then we fall, you know, something happens and we fall back, um, the enemy condemns us and makes us feel like, oh, well, you're not, you know, you're not up to par or you're not, you know, keeping up with the Joneses or, you know, anything like that. And so um, the scripture that was with that post it said, in my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. <clears throat> my cry came before him and into his ear. And that is Psalms 1816. So God knows that we are going to go through stuff. He's not oblivious, ob oblivious to it. He knows the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning. He knows our whole path that we're going to take. Even when we make the choices that aren't aligned with his will, he already knows. Um, there's nothing that we can do or hide or say that God doesn't already know. So God tells us in our, in our distress, we are to call out to him. Um, we live in a, in a time where you know, these social media platforms can be a really, could be a really bad thing for, for anybody. Um, because we, we see one side of people's lives, right? And it looks perfect and it looks great and it looks like everything's together. But, um, just like, uh, Nigel had said when he was here this past week, um, you know, People don't know that, you know, on the outside, we have this facade that everything's great, everything's good, praise the Lord, you know, glory to God, all of those things. And it's really not. We're a mess inside. We're going through stuff. And I'm sick and tired of the believers of God feeling like they are alone and that they're going through stuff alone. You know, life is hard and we have to get real as believers and, and understand that and be there for each other. People lose their jobs every day. People um, go through depression every day. People go through um, grief every day, anger, you know, disappointment, discouragement. And, and if we don't talk about these things, if we don't shine light to these things, it's the, it, that's where the enemy wants us to be right there. You know, the enemy, you know, all of these things start going on and then boom, we're secluded. We want to stay home. We don't want to go to church. We back away from ministry. We back away from serving because, you know, things are going on too much. And John 16, 33 says, I have told you these things so that in me, so when all of this stuff is going on in him, we will find our peace that in this world, we will have trouble. God said we will have trouble. It's going to happen. We live in a fallen world. We live in a world where sin was released into this world. We live in a world where the enemy has brought evil into this world. But he says, you will have trouble, but take heart. And of course, what I like to do is, is dig deeper. What does take heart mean? What does that mean? Take my heart? Like, what does it mean? 
I looked up and I asked God, what does the, what does take heart mean? And it means to gain courage or confidence. The biblical meaning says to take control of your mind so that you can be brave and courageous and you can face those difficult times without, without, without crumbling, without, you know, giving up, without giving in, without falling apart, you know, we can face those difficult times and we can get through those difficult times and we, and we don't have to let those difficult times overtake us or change our, uh, our emotions or change how we feel about God or change how we feel about things. We can take heart and know, yes, I am going through some stuff and it is hard and it is difficult and Sometimes we can feel like we're going backwards from, from where God has, you know, taken us and blessed us with. But if we can face those difficult times and keep our eyes focused on him and keep our eyes focused on his good, even though we acknowledge those things, God gave us, gave us feelings. He gave us emotions. We are to deal with those things, but we're not to dwell in those things, right? Um, we can be courageous and we can be brave and we can know we can trust the word of God that he will turn everything that was meant for 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 our bad and turn it for our good and for his glory and so that is my encouragement to you guys um if we can just be real as believers and say hey my brother hey my sister i you know i'm going through the same thing you know um I've battled with depression. I've battled with um, losing a job. I've battled with struggles in my marriages. You know, if we could be real with one another and not, you know, um, as Pastor Johnny was saying, not take that culture of darkness into the kingdom. If we can be kingdom minded and have ki and, and, and prepare and position ourselves for kingdom business, that means we are there for each other. There is no judgment. There is no condemnation. There is no... Mm, well, look at there, you know, you know, all this stuff is going on. And we can believe and not just like Pastor Donnie said today, you know, we have to believe it and in, in, our, in our minds and our belief align together and not know that we believe it, but inside, mm, well, you know, be wishy-washy or whatever. So um, that is, that's just my word for um for y'all for this week take heart know that there are troubles we are in this together um whether you're in a single season like myself um whether you're in a marriage season whether you're in a mother season come on can you hear me um whether you're you know you've got teenagers and you're you feel like you're stretched with everything um if we take the time to give god our first and that is our first of of everything um there were seasons in, in my life when I really felt like I was hearing from the Lord and I was, I was um, hearing, you know, I was praying and I was interceding and I was hearing things for other people and I was letting them know what God was telling me. And um, I just felt so one with God. And then life happens, you know, we, you know, though we are not in this world, we do have to live here. Um, and we're, you know, we're here for us for a time that, but this is not our home, but we still have lives. We still have children. We still have jobs. We still have ministries that we're a part of. We still have all of those things. But if we give God our first, God will make time for everything else. And God will bring people to speak into your life. And God will bring friendships. And God will bring encouraging words. And God will bring um, whatever you need. But we have to give him the opportunity. We have to be still. We have to know. We have to rest. We have to trust. And we have to have confidence in the word. And that he is for us. And he is not against us. And though we see those promises on this side of heaven or not, God is still good and God is still holy and God is still just and God is still faithful. So that is my encouraging word. Um, go into this week, take time, read your Bible, spend some time with the Lord, um, whether you do it in the morning, in the evening, throughout the day, um, what have you, you know, spend some time with Jesus. Do what Pastor Donnie said. If you pray for 30 minutes, wait for 30 minutes to listen because God will respond in some kind of way. And it is truly amazing when we abide in the Lord. So be blessed, be encouraged, and I love you guys.